Hi, this is your host, Evan Matthews, with Awakening to Abundance, effortless abundance in all areas of life. I'd like to welcome you to our call with today's guest, Deborah Poneman. Deborah Poneman is a best-selling author and a pioneer in the world of transformation, having taught principles of creating success, happiness, and prosperity to tens of thousands of people around the world for over three decades and helping people to create unimaginable results, including becoming millionaires, billionaires, and even household names. Deborah recently received guidance that she is to teach a new body of knowledge, that the time has come for people to live lives that are so full that they are even beyond abundant. That sounds amazing to me. I love that. Today you will discover what living life beyond abundant looks like and how anyone can get there how to use the obstacles you face to immediately bring you closer to the abundance you desire and beyond, what your soul really wants, and the tiny shift you can make to have it, why some people are creating miracles in their lives and others are struggling more than ever. And Deborah will lead us in a powerful process to clear our energetic blocks so that we can then be open to receiving in all areas of life. Deborah, I am so excited about the call. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome. Thank you, Evan. I am so happy to be here with you and with everybody today. That is great because some of the things that you are being called to bring into this planet, I um, feel are just so poignant and so so ready to be heard. Look, can you, Deborah, take a few minutes and, and just tell us what you believe to be the major turning points that allowed you to manifest your current level of success? All right. Well, you know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by sharing a little bit about how I began my journey of beginning my Yes to Success seminar. And I think it's important to share that before I say why I'm not teaching it anymore. (laughs) I know that sounds crazy, but I'm going to do it. And because I was recently guided to give new knowledge and well unlike a lot of people who I know you've interviewed and I've interviewed I didn't have any kind of traumatic childhood my parents couldn't have been more loving and kind and my mother says that I was born happy which I didn't get a chance to ask her what that looked like but <laughs> you like to like come out of the womb smiling I don't know but, <laughs> I could have been but anyway and you know I mean we weren't rich by any stretch we were very middle class so we had everything we needed and we appreciated everything we had and I was born at just the right time because I was the perfect flower child and (laughs) I loved living in those times where there was lots of free love and but when I was 18 I learned the transcendental meditation technique and I went on to become a meditation teacher and during the decade of the 70s don't go calculating how old I am but during the (laughs) decade of the 70s I taught about a thousand people to meditate actually more than that and I spent a lot of time on long meditation courses sometimes for six months at a time meditating up to 8, 10, 12 hours a day. I know it's hard to believe but even for weeks at a stretch in complete silence and when I was back in the States I lived in a community of meditators but when I saw the age of 30 looming on the horizons I, I, I realized that I better do the things that grown-ups do, like get health insurance and car insurance and maybe even a car. So I left this community that I was living in, and I moved to L.A., and I started working for a financial company. And one night, a bunch of us went to a money seminar. I thought it was going to be on stocks and bonds, but when I walked in, I realized that it was far from that. It was the New Age community, and the guy who was speaking, and this is the early 80s, was talking about the law of attraction and he was talking about if you want to be more abundant in your life that what you have to do is you have to think thoughts of abundance you have to wish other people prosperity if you are jealous or covetous of of what another has it's going to keep money away from you and all kinds of principles of abundance and every single cell in my body was vibrating when I was listening to this guy talk and I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and I did what any intelligent person would do I went home next morning quit my job and I spent four months and I put together a very powerful 
seminar based on the teachings of people like Napoleon Hill and Emmett Fox and Wallace Waddles. And basically what I did is I took the most powerful yet very practical tools and the most timely knowledge from hundreds and hundreds of pages and hours and hours and hours of listening to tapes. I had to listen to tapes at the time. And I was ready to, to launch the seminar and then fear took over. And it's very interesting because I was in my 20s. I was a woman, which made a lot more difference back then than it does now. I had no business experience other than teaching meditation. Uh, I drove a 10-year-old beat-up Chevy Bel Air that my aunt had left me when she died, and I was broke. And here I was, I was going to go out and teach people how to be successful and prosperous. (laughs) (laughs) But here's what I knew. I knew that an idea comes to you because it wants to be manifested by you. And if your ideas wanted to be manifested by me, they would have come to me. But you dream the dreams that you're supposed to manifest, and I dream the dreams that I'm supposed to manifest, and the ideas come to you at the time in creation when the universe needs that idea to manifest in order to further evolution and i always say this god the creator all that is whatever you feel comfortable calling that force i'm just going to call that force god because i think that's the most universal word that that people use but i really feel that god whispers in our ears the things that need to be manifested in creation at that time because god can't come down and you know open up a gluten-free bakery, or God can't come down and give success seminars, right? (laughs) Talk about what it would look like. I don't know what that would look like. So I believe that the creator depends on us to hear the whispers. And God wanted the principles of yes to success to be taught and looked around and said, I think I'll whisper this in Deborah's ears and see if she receives the message. And I did. And by the way, if you don't act on the whispers from the creator after the second or third time, then the creator is going to go whisper it to someone else. And I know that probably everybody has had a brilliant idea at some time in their lives and they didn't act on it, and a few years later, someone else was making millions from their idea. Ever happened to you, Evan? It has. (laughs) We've all had that happen. So these principles wanted to be manifested by me, so doubts at all and all. I did something that I recommend that everybody else do when they have an idea, and they're like, oh, should I, shouldn't I? Just take a step from which there's no turning back, And, and again, I I was broke and et cetera, et cetera, but I rented a room and I made up some posters and I put them up. And as soon as I put them up, Deborah Olson, which is my name at the time, to teach how to manifest success, I I couldn't turn around and not do it. And actually, here's another important point. You know, I had all the reasons why I wasn't ready, but you can't wait until you think you're ready because you will never think you're ready because the mind will always give you reasons why you can't do something, okay, right? And we live in a relative universe, so there's always going to be loose ends, and nothing will ever be perfectly in place. So loose ends and all, you just have to get your butt off the chair and take a deep breath and and move through the force field and then watch the magic unfold. And, And if you start out and you find you're going in the wrong direction, then you just course correct. But, you know, you can't steer a parked car. you got to, like, get it out of the driveway. So that was it. I just, doubts and all, I set up this introductory night. And even though many members of what I call the discouragement committee came out and told me why my idea wouldn't work, uh, when I went to the Santa Monica Public Library, there was standing room only. And that was the beginning of Yes to Success. Congratulations. That's that's fantastic. But, you know, obviously uh, there's more to that story. Well, actually there is more to that story. And within a few years, uh, my seminars were being taught in major cities all over the United States and seven countries on four continents. And I had numerous corporate clients, Mattel, McDonnell Douglas, Xerox. And I was featured on radio and TV shows and print media. And I had the first infomercial in the history of infomercials to sell an information product. And I was about to have my own daytime TV talk show. And most importantly, 
thousands of people were realizing their dreams. I mean, use, using what I, what I taught them, people became major players in the world of business, best-selling authors, renowned transformational leaders. I mean, there are people who became doctors who never thought they could, who started huge nonprofits around the world. I have someone who became a professor who didn't even have a high school degree. I mean, millionaires, billionaires, people attracted their soulmates. I mean, you name it, people created it with Yes to Success. But in 1988, when I was about to, like I say, launch my own daytime TV talk show, and I actually had a major New York publisher ready to publish my book, and I just gave it all up. <laughs> I always tell people, breathe, because no tragedy befell me. Basically what happened was I gave birth to my first child, and when I looked at that little girl, I actually remember looking at her little fingers and thinking, there is no way. I mean, I didn't want to leave this child to go to the bathroom, let alone getting up at 5 <laughs> o'clock every morning to tape a TV show. <laughs> mm. I had a uh, client in Singapore who wanted me to just have that baby and, you know, just get that baby out and get to Singapore. And I'm thinking, there is absolutely no way and I knew that I had to be true to my own teaching and and which was listen to your inner voice and follow your heart so uh, if I didn't walk my own talk how could I expect anyone else to do it and I also believe that people have built-in authenticity meters and my meter reading would have been way over in negative territory if I kept traveling around the world when my heart was home with my baby my little girl and three years later my son and and I just have to tell you I mean, nobody was happy with me because the agent was waiting, the publisher was waiting, the producer was ra waiting, and, you know, they would call me and say, oh, I heard you had the baby, let's get going. And I said, you know, I'm really sorry, but you're going to have to call me back in 18 years, <laughs> and, which actually turned into 21 when I had my son. And people said to me, have you gone out of your mind? And I said to them, Absolutely. <laughs> I went right out of my mind and right into my heart, and that's what I had to do to be true to myself. And just by the way, I actually, I mean, I, I didn't have a choice. I was in love, but I believe that ultimately what we all have to do is go out of our, our minds and be led by our hearts, and not only just for our own personal happiness, but also for the survival of the planet. People are realizing that now that the mind is really not our friend, that the mind separates, it sees what's the differences between you and me, it judges, it sees what's wrong, it wants to be right, it creates complication, and the heart, all the heart wants to do is merge in love, and it sees what's right, and it sees how we can get along, and it sees that we don't have to compete, but we could cooperate. So, yeah, I went out of my mind, and I went into my heart, and for 20 years I was a mom at home. It was funny because I went from speaking to thousands to speaking to what felt like pretty much speaking to myself. But <laughs> that's also <laughs> another story. <laughs> but, yeah, while well, well, I was home, and I didn't, like, stay home and churn my own butter. I did do a lot of things. I hosted spiritual luminaries. I came to the U.S. from India, and I wrote a book on how to cook for your vegetarian kids, and I wrote a chicken soup book. And But that was only when there weren't basketball games to cheer at or science projects to work on or – you know, dance recitals to go to, and it really it never bothered me that my little girl was always going right when all the other little girls were going left. I just, <laughs> that was it, and that's what I did. So, I mean, obviously you really loved being a mom at home. Can I ask, did you ever doubt that decision? Did I ever doubt that decision? Yeah. <laughs> I, well, yeah, because I'll tell you, there are times when I thought I'd made, like, really a gigantic mistake, like during my kids' teenage years, when I believed that everything, that I'd done everything, like, really, really wrong, and they probably would have been better off if I was in Singapore. And really, also just to be really transparent, when mm -hmm. I saw the names of my students on, like, the New York Times bestseller list, 
or when I turned on the TV oh. and there they were smiling across the airwaves while I was knee deep in dirty diapers. I mean, really, if you don't have doubts, then you're not human. But really, it's true. And and but I knew that what I taught in my seminars was true, in that each of us has a calling, and each of us was put on earth to fulfill a God-given purpose. And if you follow your heart, even if you take what appears to be a detour, your life's purpose is not going to go away. As a matter of fact, if you follow your heart, what you're doing is your life's purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, if you take time away from your career to be with your kids, I'm not that I believe that every parent has to do that because there's no way of knowing if your kids are going to be better off. But if you want to take time off to follow your heart to, uh, you know, build schools in Uganda or work on a political campaign or be by your, by your grandma's side when she's passing away. Again, that detour is your purpose. And if you do have a dharma or, a, you know, something you are supposed to accomplish in this lifetime, like write the great American novel, it will still be waiting for you on the other side. And I'll tell you something else you could take to the bank, and that is 20 years go by in the wink of an eye. I mean, before I knew it, my babies were adults. And I remember, actually, this one day my friend Janet Atwood of Passion Test fame, she said to me, who she was actually one of my students in, in the early 80s, and she said, don't you think it's about time you started speaking again and stop pretending that your kids still need you? And of course, it was time for me to start speaking again, but I had already stopped pretending they needed me a long time before that. And really, I'm not sure they ever really needed me, but I knew that it was I who needed them because truthfully to me, one little, you know, I love you so much, Mommy, or you're the best Mommy in the whole world, or, you know, all those things that kids say to you, that that was worth a lot more than that. Than a thousand standing ovation. So we're gonna adjust, yeah. Yeah, but you know, then you got to get back to teaching at some point. So that's what I did. You said you started teaching something else, or or yes to success. Well, you know, when I was ready to stop needing them, <laughs> I started teaching yes to success again, and it's actually really interesting. You know, people loved it, and they started creating these unbelievable miracles in their lives again. I mean, it was as if no time passed. I started being on talk shows and telesummits, and my calendar started filling up with speaking engagements. But it's interesting. This time around, there was something that didn't feel quite right, and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. And then one day, I was doing what I call sitting for guidance. It's kind of like spontaneous writing, and it's how I connect mm -hmm. directly to God each day for, I guess you would say, instructions. And this guidance came to me. It was very, very clear, and it just kept flowing and flowing. Even after I put the pen down, it was like it just kept flowing. And it was, um, yes, these principles and yes to success are still valid, still powerful, still work and you're not supposed to teach it anymore. It was interesting because some of the downloads that I got were, one of the things that I teach in Yes to Success is that it's good to have a goal because it's like if you want to go to, I don't know, a place that has beautiful scenery and, and pinewood forest or redwood forest, you can't just go out of the driveway and then just start randomly driving. You have to find out where the redwood forests are and plot a path to the redwood forest. And it's the same thing with life. If you want to get to a certain destination, you have to know where you're going. And yet what I taught in Yes to Success is enjoy the journey. Because if you don't arrive at the goal, you will have the joy of every minute along the path and all of the scenery between here and the redwood forest. And what I was finding was that when I looked at the lives of people who were using the principles that I had taught them, that a lot of people still believed that the moment they would get to the goal, that that would be the moment. 
when they got their soulmate, when they had a best-selling book, when they became a millionaire, that that would be the moment that their lives would miraculously become wonderful. And it doesn't work that way. And the guidance I got was to teach people to create the type of success and happiness and abundance that's not dependent on any circumstance, to teach people how to have those things in a way that it will never go away. And when I began to write and teach from this new paradigm and I look from this new perspective, I observed that when people get what they thought they wanted, not only does it not make them happier, but often they become more unhappy because they had held out this belief that when they got that thing, the job, the fame, the soulmate, whatever, that all would be well, but it wasn't. So they tried for something else, maybe a little bit bigger title or more fame or more money. And when they got that, they still weren't happy. And that, by the way, it's why we see so many millionaires and billionaires and rock stars and movie stars turning to drugs and, you know, committing suicide because the dream turned out to kind of induce a, a, a nightmare. And when those visions are reached, it often even brings with it a whole new set of anxieties, like now I've got my soulmate, but what if he leaves me? Or what if my soulmate isn't really my soulmate because I'm noticing that he leaves his socks on the floor just like the last one, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Or, you know, I've manifested my life's purpose and – it's not all it was cracked up to be, and, and I actually don't even – it's kind of a drudgery. And even though it's so great to play in the playground and people should have goals and, and it's fun to have the journey towards them, happiness, when it's attached to an acquisition or because, it's just – going to be transitory. I'm so happy because my daughter is finally getting married. Um, I'm so happy because I got accepted at the master's program. I'm so happy because I'm down to a size six. But what happens when your daughter calls off the wedding or or you put the weight back on? So again, as long as we're living in the third dimension reality, we will be planning weddings. We will be getting degrees. We will be gaining and losing weight. And it's all wonderful as long as we don't have the expectation that anything in relative creation is going to bring us lasting happiness. Because beyond happy, beyond abundant, it's an outside job. That is, it's outside the realm of any because. Yeah. Well, I, I, Deborah, I've seen people who seem happy from the abundance they've gained. Oh, there's always one in every crowd. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be the guy that just throws that out there, but I, I, I mean, that is true. <laughs> it is true. And see, yes, and it is. It's absolutely true. And again, we live in a relative universe, and sure, it's so cool, you know. You put a bid in on the house, and you got it, you know. You get the book contract. You, you know, get it. It, absolutely. You know, it, it's like that's what life is all about. But I'll tell you, there's a Harvard professor of psychology. His name is Dan Gilbert, and he wrote this book. And he spent years collecting scientific data, and he found, listen to this one, he found that not only will getting what you think you want not make you any happier, but he found that, as a matter of fact, not getting what you think you want will make you equally as happy. Your level of happiness doesn't change. It, he actually even cited mm -hmm. research done that followed people who won the lottery and people who became paraplegic. And what, what, they, what he found was that a year after winning a million dollars or over a million dollars or a year after accepting the fact that you would be bound to a wheelchair for the rest of your life, people in both groups were equally as happy. And his research then went on to say that the danger to linking your happiness to a specific goal, like a soulmate or an amount of money, or when you get what you think you want, you're high for a short period of time, and then you go back to your old 
you know, kind of feeling empty Adam. self and looking for yeah. something else outside yourself to fill the emptiness. And if you don't get that thing you believed would fill the emptiness and bring you happiness, then the same thing happens. You just go back to feeling empty and thinking something outside yourself will fill it. So basically, well, okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. So if you could live in a state that no matter what your outer circumstances, no matter what you have or don't have, no matter what you achieved or didn't, achieve or who you shared your life with or didn't share your life with, you would still be extraordinarily happy and abundant inside. Does that sound like a good place to live? Sounds like a brilliant place to live, yes. Sign me up. (laughs) Okay, good. I will. (laughs) All right. And I hope I sign everybody up because the reality of this place beyond happy and beyond abundant It's what the great masters of the East and the West have really been saying all along. If you look underneath the surface of even things like think and grow rich or grow rich with peace of mind, they've been saying that there is a field that is beyond right or wrong, beyond good and bad, beyond happy and sad. There's a field where we spontaneously see the perfection and all there is where we enjoy the action for the sake of the action and not just for the results, and where we don't just know intellectually, but we experience directly the connectedness of ourselves to each other and all of creation and to the creator. And and some people say it's a field of unbounded love. Some say it's a field of divine grace. Some say that when we live there, we're living in a place of enlightenment or self-realization or we've woken up. But whatever you call it, it's a place where the fabric of love is God, the fabric of God is love, and we experience that we are made of that fabric and there's nowhere to go because everything we want we have already and everything we want just effortlessly manifests and when you see this playground of creation as it truly is that is completely vibrating with grace, that's really where we want to live our lives. Sounds good. (laughs) Sounds really (laughs) good. Let me ask you this. Are there things that we can get there faster? Like, like, I mean, it sounds like an amazing experience, but when you're there, it's like um, people want, people want to feel like there's, you know, abundance and, and wealth and, that you know that that soulmate and all those things is there is there a way to make it faster to get there fast well yeah. okay here's here's it's a great question it's a great great question and you know what probably everybody was thinking the same thing like sounds good sounds like some movie i think i saw once <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know what the name of it was but the truth is can we get there faster and the answer is I don't really know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I, I don't. And I'll, and I'll tell you. So here's the thing. I used to think that when I went on those long meditation courses where I would go for six, eight months at a time and meditate for 10, 12 hours a day, and I really did do that many, many times in my youth, And I remember at the end of one of those long courses where there were really hundreds of us doing these long meditations for months at a time, and somebody asked our teacher, how much more do we have to do these months and months stretches of meditation and before we are self-realized? Because that's why we were doing it, because we wanted to live in that place. And his answer, much to our surprise, was, Actually, this is a quote. He said, a man who has never meditated a day in his life can be walking down the streets in New York City and go into a state of enlightenment by inhaling the fumes of a bus as it's passing by. So, (laughs) you know, when you look at 
uh, some of our great guides, people to me who quite obviously are living in that place beyond happy, beyond abundant, living in that flow of grace. Some teachers tell us to do nothing, that the more we let go, the sooner we'll be there, and other teachers tell us to take austerities and do austerities and that it's going to take lifetimes. And and I say this, I say don't make it a destination or you'll be no better off than you were when you were striving for the BMW. Don't simply change the destination of best-selling author to enlightened being. I've seen people do that and quite frankly, they're just as miserable as people who are striving for fame and fortune or maybe more so. But I also say that just in case we could speed up our progress to living in that place that is beyond abundant because it contains all abundance within it, just in case we could speed up our progress, why not? And I can guarantee you this. I have practices that I teach that I believe speed up your path towards that place. And even if they don't, they will make your life a much more joyful experience while you're waiting for the cockroach to walk. <laughs> well, would you be so kind as to share some of those practices with us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there are many. Yeah, I would be that kind for you. <laughs> good. good. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to – I'm going to – tell you one and I know that people are probably as soon as it comes out of my mouth they're going to roll their eyes okay it's like oh no don't give us that one again but what it is is have gratitude at every moment you know in the course of miracles it says gratitude goes hand in hand with love and where one is the other must be found so where there's love there's gratitude and where there's gratitude there's love when you make start making a conscious effort to notice the miracles that happen every minute in your life, you will be so naturally overwhelmed with gratitude. Just It's just a little tweak, okay? It's a little tweak that you have to do and start noticing the littlest things that happen. And when you give thanks for them, Two things will happen. One, by the power of your attention, they'll increase because what we put our attention on grows. So when you notice the miracles, more miracles will come. And when I always, when a, the littlest miracle, I go, thank you, God. And again, that's the God of your understanding. I say, thank you, God. And then I get more because noticing the miracles and having the joy from them, that's our, the miracle is God's gift to us and our joy is, is, our gift back to God, it's our way of saying, thanks, I noticed these miracles, I'm having a blast, and I'm loving it. And when you appreciate it and you notice and you give thanks, then, of course, God wants to give you more. It's like if you give somebody a gift and they say, oh, that's nice, put it over on the table. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. But if you give somebody a gift and they're like, thank you, this is, like, so cool, it's just what I wanted. So, I mean, I say thank you for everything. I get a good parking parking space. Thank you, God. A a new line opens up in the grocery store just as I'm pushing my cart past it. Thank you, God. I mean, you know, everything. I, I just am always saying thank you. And I'm telling you, when you put your attention on the miracles, the miracles multiply. And to have the conscious thought to have gratitude. And I'll tell you one other thing. I have a, a woman that I met. I was taking class, and she, she does curling and photography. This is so cool. Curling and photography is when you could actually take a picture of somebody's aura. And mm-hmm. she said that when people come in her studio, and they usually come in kind of their aura is like maybe gray or brown because they haven't been having a good day, she says to them, think of something good that happened in your day. And they do, and immediately the aura changes. You know, some colors, nice colors, yellow, purple, you know, whatever starts going into their aura. And then she says, now have gratitude for that good thing that happened to you during the day. And the minute 
they start expressing gratitude. She said that this radiance just overtakes them, and it is the aura becomes comes so huge that it's beyond the scope of the camera lens. So if that's what happens from gratitude, that we just become filled with light, and light is the substance of that field of all there is, it certainly is bringing us closer there in vibration, in alignment with that field beyond happy and beyond abundant. So can I ask you this? So why do some people, you know, are able to create miracles and then there are other people who still struggle? Can you help with that? I was so excited for a minute there. <laughs> you- no, no, it's it's really. I'm just teasing you. It's a it's a absolutely legitimate question. And you know, people say to me all the time, you know, why do I always seem to struggle? Why are there blocks to my success and happiness? Why do they keep popping up? And and when I say to them, you know, your struggle are the creator's greatest gift to you. I mean, that's law of attraction 101. And I know all of you are way beyond law of attraction 101. You know the thoughts that you think if they're of lack and limitation, you are going to draw lack and limitation into your life. If they are of prosperity and abundance, you will draw prosperity and abundance. It might not happen overnight. you got to get that current going. I say it's like, you know, when we were kids, my friend had a, a, a pool in her backyard, not a built-in, but it was like one of those above-ground pools that was like maybe four feet high, and we thought that was just the greatest, but we used to make currents. We would like all walk around the inside periphery, inside the water, and at first it's really hard to walk through the water, and then it would get easier and easier and easier and easier, and then we'd let go and we'd just float and the current would take us. And that's it. At the beginning, it might be a little bit of a struggle to switch your attention and to put your attention on what's great about your life, what's great about your children, what's great about your partner, and what's great about your abundance. I mean, think of all the abundance you do have in your life. There's so much abundance, and if you want more abundance, you put your attention on the abundance. And if we do have struggles, if we I think that's what you call them, if we do have struggles, that's a blessing too because any pain you experience is a creator's way of saying to you to do something differently and maybe take a look and see what part you played in the struggle and what learning there might be there for you. But there's a concept in Kabbalah, I don't know if you're familiar with Kabbalah at all, but it's the Jewish mystical text that says that we didn't incarnate by chance but for a reason, and that reason is what they call tikkun. It's T-I-K-K-U-N, tikkun, which in Hebrew means correction or repair. So what are we here to correct? Well, it's not that there's anything wrong with us, but we each came here with uh, basically with baggage from previous lifetimes, all the situations where we didn't complete something with someone or we didn't get it right or we didn't gain the wisdom. So we incarnate to get it right this time. And each of us has distinct challenges that we came here to face so that we can get them right. And these are the obstacles, and these are your greatest gifts. You didn't even, I mean, really, we're not here to have everything handed to us on a silver platter. If there was nothing for us to learn, then we would not have taken a, a, a human birth. I'll just tell you a, a really quick story from Kabbalah. It's a story about a, a man who dies and he meets his guardian angel the, who was sent to prepare him to prove his worthiness to be accepted into heaven. So the man tells the angel, the angel says, you know, what have you done, you know, to be worthy to go to heaven? And, and the man says, oh, I am, I was always the nicest person. Everybody loved me. I didn't have an enemy in the world i never got into a conflict with one person and the angel says to the man well that argument will get you a first class ticket to hell (laughs) because the kabbalists say that going through life just being a nice person it's not enough that we and especially people who are listening to this call 
because we are the light workers. And if you think, well, I'm not a light worker, you are, or you would not be listening to this call. You'd be, you know, out shooting pool and having a beer. But you came here to create change in the world. And positive change almost always encounters resistance. So we have to embrace the difficult situations, embrace the difficult people. They were put in our path for our own growth and our own transformation. It does sound tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm supposed to say like, oh, and wave the magic wand and your life will be better. And But the truth is, it's actually fun. I mean, I know. It's like fun. I have to tell somebody something. I have to tell my boss to stop speaking, you know, disrespectfully to me. That's not going to be fun. But I'll tell you something. If you don't know what to do when you're, first of all, if you don't face the obstacle, it's going to come up again and again and again in a different form. That's number mm-hmm. one. And you know that and it's going to be harder every time. So you might as well take care of it now. And if you don't know what to do with how to face it, what to say, what words to use, if your mind doesn't, get out of that mind. It is not serving you. Move into your heart. Move into the heart space and ask, okay, what would love do in this situation? And by the way, just from invoking the energy of love, love will also begin to pave the way for a glorious outcome in that situation. So you could ask, what would love do? And also, there is so much help from all the amazing light workers who have come on the planet right now to help us on our journeys. And also from all of the beings on other levels of creation, our angels, our guides, our ancestors, so many beings are just waiting for you to ask for their help. I actually received guidance and was given a a powerful clearing that actually removes blocks that people have. It's not the blocks of their tacoons because that's for their growth, but it's the energetic blocks to not allowing them to know that they have every resource and every bit of strength and every bit of grace to live a glorious life. And actually, I would love to share. Do we have time for me to share this? It's kind of a guided meditation. Yeah, please do. All right, very good. So here's what I'd like everybody to do. This is a powerful process of clearing and energizing the chakras. We know the chakras are the energy centers in our bodies. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everybody to just sit comfortably with their eyes closed and your spine comfortably straight. Don't strain. It would really, really be good to do this not while you're driving. It would be, especially the eyes closed part, it would be better to do it in a quiet room and even put your pets outside the door. This should be a place just for you because it's very, very powerful. During this chakra cleanse, I'm not only going to be cleansing the different energy centers, but also energizing them. And I'm going to give you a few instructions during the process, but don't let the intellect become too involved or too concerned that you're doing it right. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. Okay. I'm going to start out with a Sanskrit, a little mantra, and this is from the Rig Veda, and this was written uh, well over 2,500 years ago, and it's called the Gayatri Mantra, and it purifies the heart of the chanter, and it also purifies the heart of the listener, and the translation is, may the divine light of the Supreme Being open our hearts and illuminate our intellects to lead us along a path of righteousness. So I'm going to chant that in Sanskrit, and then I'll begin the chakra cleanse. So here we go. 
Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yona Prachodayat Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yona Prachodayat Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devas Yadi Mahi Diyo Yonat Prachodayat Now, please allow your awareness to go to the first chakra, the root chakra, located at the base of your spine. And there visualize and feel a beautiful, rich red color. Universal consciousness, all that is, please remove any blocks to the full expression of my kundalini energy, my stability, and my connection to Mother Earth and return these blocks to dissolve at their origin. And as I hear the sound of the sacred mantra and breathe into that space at the base of my spine, let this create an opening to the energy of strength, stability, courage, and a secure and solid foundation for my life. Now we'll all breathe in slowly through the nose and out through the mouth. Again in through the nose and out through the mouth, directing our breath into that chakra. Continue breathing in that way. As I say, the mantra that stimulates its opening Lum, lum, lum. Now allow your awareness to go to the second chakra located at the navel just below your belly button. And there visualize and feel a beautiful, rich, orange color. Universal consciousness, all that is, please remove any blocks to the full expression of my creative self-expression, my sexuality, and my joy, and return those blocks to dissolve at their origin. And as I hear the sound of the sacred mantra and breathe into that space, Let this create an opening to the energy of sacred relationships, the flow of emotions without guilt or shame, the freedom to be myself, and the enjoyment of sacred pleasure. Now we'll breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, directing our breath to the navel. Thumb, thumb, thumb. Now, please allow your awareness to go to the third chakra located at the solar plexus in the center of your body, just below where your two bottom ribs meet. And there visualize and feel a radiant yellow color. Universal consciousness, all that is, please remove the blocks that cause me to experience fear, anxiety, judgment, anger, or victimization and return the blocks to dissolve at their origin. 
As I hear the sound of the sacred mantra and breathe into that space, let this create an opening for the energy of expansiveness, personal power, spiritual growth, and a strong sense of self-worth, knowing that I am a powerful creator. Breathe. Ram, 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 Now allow your awareness to move to the fourth chakra located in the heart in the center of your chest. And there feel a radiant green color. Universal consciousness, all that is, please remove any blocks that cause me to feel loneliness or isolation, that prevent me from loving myself and from giving love to and receiving love from others, and return those blocks to dissolve at their origin. As I hear the sound of the sacred mantra and breathe into that space of the heart, Let this create an opening to the energy of love so that I can live with passion, so that I can know devotion, so that I can give and receive unconditionally and feel deeply connected to all that is. Breathe into that space. Yum. 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 Please allow your awareness to go to the fifth chakra located in the center of your throat and there feel a radiant blue color. Universal consciousness, all that is, please remove any blocks to my ability to speak my truth, to communicate clearly, to express my wants and needs, and any blocks that might cause me to speak words that are harsh or hurtful, and return them to to dissolve at their origin. As I hear the sound of the sacred mantra, and breathe into that space in my throat. Let this create an opening to the energy of truth so that I express myself without fear and with words that uplift, inspire, and are aligned with the vibration of the highest spiritual truths for all. Um. Hum, hum. Now allow your awareness to go to the sixth chakra, located in the center of the forehead, just above where the eyebrows would meet. And there... Feel a radiant violet color. Universal consciousness, all that is, please remove any blocks to my ability to see the highest truth so that I no longer filter the world through the lens of my ego and return those blocks to dissolve at their origin. Now as I hear the sound of the sacred mantra and breathe into that space, let this create an opening for me to accept my own clairvoyance, to clearly see my soul's path, and to trust my inner knowing completely without reservation, surrendering to that voice, the voice that is guiding me to my greatest good. Om. Om. 
Now please allow your awareness to go to the seventh chakra, the thousand petal lotus located at the crown of your head. There you will find pure, radiant, luminous white light. Universal energy, all that is. Please remove any blocks to my union with my higher self and knowledge of your infinite creation and the part I am meant to play in it and return those blocks to dissolve at their origin. As I hear the sound of the sacred mantra and breathe into that space at the crown of my head, let this create an opening for the universal life force to pour into me, igniting my highest spiritual understanding and my knowledge of the self. And now let it flow unobstructed throughout all of the chakras, illuminating the perfect health, purity, peace, love, and joy that I am. a prayer for world peace. Loka samastan sukinur bhavantu Loka samastan sukinur bhavantu Loka samastan sukinur bhavantu Om Shanti 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 That was beautiful. Thank you. I kind of enjoyed myself. (laughs) (laughs) It was just really calming and just just took a you know part of that flow that you've been talking about throughout the call it just felt like that was you know linking everything within your being to uh kind of feel that and and i love the colors and the words that were associated with each chakra i just thought that was amazing so thank you deborah just, well you're welcome well, that's that's brilliant deborah I'm, I'm curious about what is possible for the people listening today and are you able to take a few minutes and just tell us some of the amazing turnarounds? I mean, you mentioned some millionaires and billionaires and the people that you've mm-hmm. you've impacted with your teaching, but can you tell us just a few of those examples? You know, I could tell you about the millionaires and billionaires and the household names and the New York Times best-selling authors, and and you all know them, and you've probably interviewed them, and I've interviewed them. Yep. But what one one story that I really really love is with this new knowledge that I have begun to share, there was a gentleman who had come to my Yes to Success seminar actually several times, and he had actually achieved quite a bit from utilizing the principles. Financial success, had a beautiful home, and um, just success in business. But one thing that he really, really wanted was something that – he didn't believe that he could have, but yet he held on to this dream like tenaciously because he really felt, he actually wanted to have his music published and he felt that when he had his music published, that's when he would be happy. And when he learned this new knowledge from me, he said to me, I'm finally going to let go and just say, let thy will be done. But he really did, because I teach a lot of different exercises, and he really did, was able to let go. And I'm sure you can anticipate the end of the story. Within 
absolutely no time, out of the clear blue sky, somebody showed up that had heard his music two decades ago at a children's <laughs> music festival, seriously, tracked him down and wanted to make an album of his children's music. Wow. So that's a beautiful thing. And I've actually had that happen with another woman who was actually the parent of one of my children's friends. And she was at a seminar that I gave for the local organization anyway. And her husband had uh, passed away. And she was a gigantic victim around that. And not that it's not a horrible thing, but that was the center obsession of her life was that her husband had abandoned her and betrayed her and her kids and kids. And she switched up some thinking and she started using some of the techniques not only to be happy, but to be beyond happy. And she attracted into her life the love of her life and Seeing them together, I mean, I, I practically cry when I see them together. I saw them in a sushi restaurant the other night. <laughs> but but I practically, really, because she stopped believing that when she let go of the blame and the angst and that God had punished her and saw the gift in that getting over that tacoon, okay, mm. and she gave up believing that when she found somebody else that she would be happy and started enjoying the journey. And again, as soon as there was no longer that desperation, I have to find somebody else, but just surrendering and loving what is, the person showed up. Brilliant. Yeah, and it's just been quite amazing, this new body of knowledge, quite amazing. Yeah, that, that that's some special uh, transformations you're speaking about. I get thrilled about the idea of helping people take control of their life. You know, just uh, the fact that we get to assist in that, you know, even in my small little part here. I, there is so much to learn from you, Deborah, and I've asked you to create a special offer for everyone who is listening to the call. I highly encourage you to go into Deborah's special offer right now, and I'll just give you the link to it. It's www awakening to abundance.com forward slash seeds s e e d s one more time www.awakening to abundance.com forward slash seeds s e e d s deborah can you let everyone know what they're going to find there yes and it starts out with why my keyword is seeds like seeds, like is it on a program on gardening? <laughs> well, actually, it is. Uh, it's what you're going to now begin to plant in your soul. Mm. Because our entire lives, seeds have been planted in our souls by other people's thoughts, by what our parents teach us and our politicians say and, and the media and, and what our clergy teach us and also just things that just blow into our souls from things we overhear. We have, we have not been conscious of the fact that all of these things get planted in our soul and then we kind of unconsciously nurture these seeds. It's time to start consciously planting new seeds in, in your soul. So what I do is I give you new seeds to plant so that you can have a life that is beyond happy. And guess what? I guarantee it. It's so funny that I give a money-back guarantee, but I am so certain that your life will dramatically transform that I will give you your money back if you do not notice huge progress. And there are six modules in Seeds for Your Soul, Life Beyond Happy. The first is how we can spontaneously become aware of what seeds we're nurturing. And the second module is, I talked a little bit about how, how obstacles are a gift from the Creator, but I go much more deeply into what you do when obstacles appear and how to dissolve them and how to have them no longer be taking over like weeds the garden of your soul. 
okay, and mm -hmm. it's a very, very powerful module. And then in Module 3, which is called the Temple of Your Light Body, I actually give techniques of how you can refine the vehicle. You know, we say that the body is our temple, and it is. It houses our soul. At this very powerful time in creation when an enormous amount of light is coming on the planet, that light contains the knowledge and the vibration that is so readily available to everybody because the veil has become so thin, but sometimes our bodies, we've polluted them in a way that we are not vessels that the light can penetrate easily. So what I do is I give you ways that you can purify the temple of your body so that it will be an open vehicle for the light and also how to get rid of energetic blocks on the physical level and even how to purify your environment so that your environment supports the flow of energy so that we that the light is invited into your home and that we can move much more quickly on this journey. And then the next is your role on planet Earth because once you do become a vehicle of the light, then you will also start becoming a generator of the light. So in that module, it's how you can maximize what you are becoming to have the power to transform the planet. And believe it or not, each one of you who is listening, you each individually have the power to totally transform the planet, not by anything you do, but by who you are being. And it's not just being nice or smiling all the time. In this module, I cover that, what we can do to really be light generators on the planet. Um, the next module, it's actually called The End of Fear and the Beginning of Love. Sometimes fear holds us back from taking the next step that we know that we need to take to become a harbinger of light on the planet to do what our soul wants us to do for our own happiness, to go beyond happiness. I talk about what fear really is, how we can eradicate fear, and how we can then live a life that is dominated by the vibration of love. I do talk about you know, love of our partner, love of our children, love of other human beings, and universal love. And then finally, the last module is the journey home. And the journey home, of course, is the final things that we can do so that we are living in that place of infinite grace and infinite light of all that is beyond right and wrong, beyond good and bad, where truth and love dominate and it could be called waking up it could be called becoming enlightened or living in the ocean of love whatever it is you want to call it it's more powerful tools to take us on the journey home and the bonuses you know that earlier i mentioned that there are these powerful light workers on the planet that can energetically help us speed up our journey. And I feel that I have found six of the best of the best. And I asked them to make audios to support all of you in your journey. And I have the amazing Rick Moss, who does not one, but I believe five clearings for clearing childhood traumas. I don't know if you know him, but this guy is just like off the charts powerful. He also helps us release old wounds and retained emotions that still exist from childhood, even if you're not consciously aware of them, and frees your ability to love yourself. Then we have an audio from John Newton. What he does is that he clears our ancestral lineage because sometimes there is something really tenacious, some block that just does not seem to go away, and it manifests often as physical pain. He is an amazing light worker, and his gift is being able to clear people's ancestral lineages, and he does a powerful, powerful clearing. Then the wonderful Bill Farber, who probably many of you are familiar with, I've interviewed him. He is 
just one of, again, one of the most powerful light workers on the planet. And he does these energy alignments. And he gets anything that's out of alignment that is producing unhappiness in your life, he is able to align. And by the way, you can listen to these alignments over and over and over, and you spontaneously have better health and more energy and more clarity and more joy and more success and more personal power and, most importantly, more peace. And then Mark Romero, who also is one of my favorites, he creates this music that actually was tested by a NASA scientist, and not only does it directly enliven our good health and increase our intuition and improve our memory and our clarity. This was proven by a NASA scientist, but it also neutralizes the negative debilitating effects of electromagnetic fields that are emitted from computers and cell phones. And what he gave me for this, to, for all of you, is the actual song that was tested by the NASA scientists. It isn't some oh. other song that he created. It's the song. So that's, that's there. Great. And then I personally interviewed, asked Michael Mastro and Robin Mastro, if I can interview them because they're both Vastu experts. And Vastu is like feng shui, but it's from India. It predates feng shui, actually. And it's amazing information on what we can do in our houses without making any structural changes to create a better financial flow, to create more harmonious relationships, to improve our business success, because there are things that we might have in the wrong place. Like we might be, we have a beautiful fountain, but it's not where our fountain should be in our home, or we have piles of junk in our relationship corner, and then we wonder why our relationships are clogged up, or we have piles of junk in our financial quadrant, and we're wondering why our finances are not able to move. So really amazing information. And Robin, she is a specifically an expert on Vastu and enhancing relationships and what you could do to not only draw a relationship into your life, but to deepen the emotional intimacy that you have with the people who are currently in your life. So those are just the bonuses. Well, that that sounds incredible. That's a, that's quite the offer, Deborah. I mean, that's, that is really something. There's so much there and so much rich content that I can only think that the listeners would would be very attracted to that because everything, and I was about to ask you about like giving us some of the benefits that people will receive, but you kind of did that all the way through. So <laughs> I think people will be amazed at what they're, they're going to receive from that. So thank you very much. Deborah, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with everyone before we get going? Yes, and I know that I should probably do this really, really fast. And the final thought that I'm going to share, and by the way, you forgot to ask me how much it is, and I love to brag about how oh, generous sorry, I am. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, please tell us. Please tell <laughs> because, us. you know, people are getting my new knowledge and all those bonuses for $97. So That is phenomenal. I'm just so That's happy to great. be able to offer it to everybody for that. So I always like to say that. So there is one more thing I could say, and that is be patient. I'm going to share a really quick little parable, and that is, you know, first of all, you can't make a child grow faster. You can't say to an infant, I need you to walk now or to a seed. I want you to be a tree tomorrow. There is an order in the universe, and everything happens in divine timing. And if we do what we have to do each day to move closer to beyond happy and to beyond abundance, then we are doing the most that we could do. But don't be impatient with yourself. Don't be impatient with your progress. One of my favorite parables also from Kabbalah is when a man says to God, God, all I want to do is serve you. All I want to do is do your will on earth, to play your part, to play my part for this planet. Please tell me what to do. And God says to the man, go out and push a rock. So the man finds the biggest boulder that he could possibly find, and he starts pushing it and pushing it, and it doesn't move. So he pushes it some more, and it doesn't move. And he pushes it some more, and it still doesn't move. And for hours he pushes it, and then he goes back day after day and pushes it, then week after week, then month after month, and it doesn't move, and finally he gives up. And when God sees he's given up, God said, why did you stop? 
And the man said, because nothing happened. And God said, what do you mean nothing happened? You are not the person you were when you first started pushing that rock. You gained integrity because you didn't give up. You gained strength of character. You're so much physically stronger. People came by and they admired you because they saw somebody that had stick to And the man says, yes, but the rock didn't move. And then God said, I didn't tell you to move the rock. I said to push it. I'll move it when the time is right. So that's what I'd like to share with everyone. Surrender. And although we go out and we push our own boulders each day, ultimately what we can do for our highest good is to just say, let thy will be done. Because your soul is eternal. You are perfect. You are whole. There's absolutely nothing that needs fixing about you. There's nothing insufficient about you. You really never even made a mistake but the only reason you're here is to discover that for yourself well deborah you are speaking my language and probably the language of many of the people on this call and um look i i, I want to direct people once again to that amazing offer and truly it is amazing because you get so much in it the link again is www.awakeningtoabundance.com forward slash seeds. One more time, www.awakeningtoabundance.com forward slash seeds, S-E-E-D-S. Deborah, thank you so much for all your time today. You know, I really enjoyed listening to your take on this thing called life, and I, I, I so look forward to us speaking again. I'd also like to thank everyone listening for sharing your your time today and also being a part of this conversation and wanting and desiring to live a life beyond abundance, as Deborah has put forward. So thank you all. I appreciate it. So all the best. 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 I appreciate it.